Bleach pushes direct dye into the hair. No, it does not. Boy, oh boy, are there some myths surrounding direct dye removal and bleach. And I am going to bust them. Hello and welcome to the world of Craig. Yes, that's me, I'm Craig, and this is my channel where we get into all things hair and sometimes a little bit of beauty. Spring has sprung. I am in the flowery shirt. You can't, you can probably just make out that behind me are some very beautiful pink roses. Yes, nothing happens by chance here on my channel. I hope that you are well. Thank you for coming back to have a look at this. Hello, and if you're here for the first time, hi, thank you. Now, removing direct dye using bleach. This is something there is a lot of misinformation about. I create a lot of short form content as well as long form content. You can find it here in shorts and on other platforms too. But I had, to, I made a, a short form, I made a short form video recently. I have a series that's called Bleach Facts. And some of the comments, just, I'm just gonna let you, uh, yeah. See those for yourself, yeah, yeah. Some of the comments were kind of reductive and I just think there's a lot of misinformation out there so we're going to set it straight. Does bleach push direct dye further into the hair? No, it does not as you've already seen in the splash. But let's get into exactly what direct dye is and how to remove it, yes. Before we get into everything you need to know about how to remove direct dye and whether bleach is a good choice or not, it is. Just to remind you, if you enjoy this video and find it helpful, you know exactly what to do. And you liking this, sharing it with a friend helps to get my content out there. And at the end of the day, I am all about everyone, everyone having the best hair that they can have, regardless of how much money they have to spend. And if you're a hair pro or a consumer, all of this content is all for you, for free, from me. There you go, right, enough of that. Now, direct dye. There, there, is, there are a couple of other direct dye videos here on my channel, but, this is something that I really needed to share with everybody. And that's the great thing about my channel is that people can comment on things and then I can react. Love that. So how does direct dye work? Direct dye is effectively something that coats the outside of the hair. The molecules of direct dye are very big. The dye molecules are big. They're very different to dye precursors that are in permanent or demi-permanent color. And they have a positive charge. That's the important part. Direct dyes have a positive charge and they attach themselves to the negatively charged parts of the hair. But, this is the crux of the whole thing, there are many factors. If hair is porous, often you'll be using direct dyes on hair that's been pre-lightened, bleached, and if that hair is porous and the cuticle is raised, then direct dyes can get into the hair and then that can cause a problem when you want to remove them. Oh. You get where I'm going. So they can leave a stain on the hair. No two direct, direct dyes are created equally. They are something that doesn't have a developer. They, there's not an, it's not an oxidative process, but sometimes you have to use something that is oxidative, oxidative to get them out, okay? but no two direct dyes are created the same, so different brands stain in different ways. These are a couple of examples of things that I have created with direct dyes. Yes, gorgeous, and you can find tutorials for both of those here on my channel as well. I have a whole playlist of tutorials. I don't really produce tutorials so much anymore because they just weren't so popular, which is bonkers to me, but they're all still on here if you wanted to go and check those out. So that's how direct dye works. It has a big molecule, that is positively charged, that attaches to the negatively charged parts of the hair. Sometimes if the hair is porous, slipping under the cuticle, oops, and leaving a stain. Now, let's talk removal. Now, whilst writing the notes for this video, I did give it some thought as to why people comment things like bleach pushes dye further into the hair, direct dye further into the hair. And I think the, the reason is, is that either people don't do a lot of direct dye removal or people don't, or they've done it using lightener and they've had bad results and you know, it has compromised someone's hair. Of course, if you're going to use bleach on, you know, in, on anyone's hair, you need to be careful. Bleach is to be respected, but it's a really brilliant, you know, way of removing direct dye. And it's been done since 
you know, for years and years, I've been hairdressing for 37 years and I've always used bleach lightener to remove direct dye. Might interest you to know that all of these, all of these that are made by colour houses, these direct dye removers, they all contain sodium persulfate or potassium persulfate, which is a form of bleach. It's bleach. It's what's in most bleach powders. So, I just think that some people have had bad results or don't know how to go about the process. We're going to get into that in a second one, my preferred method is. And we're going to talk about a few of the others. But I think that's why people have, you know, it's become a bit of a break room myth that direct dye, sorry, that bleach pushes direct dye further into the hair. It really doesn't. You know, the bleach process itself is oxidative. So you mix the bleach powder with a peroxide. We'll get into which, which what my preferred ratio mix is in a second. But you know, you, you mix the two together and then that oxidative process goes lifts, raises the cuticle slightly where that stain is living, where the, the direct dye has stained underneath the cuticle, and then it helps to remove it. Simple. Now, my preferred method is very simple, and that is to use ratios. So ratios are a, a generalized measurement, universal measurement of something. And I would use a bleach mix generally, obviously everyone's hair is different, and if someone's hair was compromised, I probably wouldn't bleach it at all. I, you know, I would say, well, I'm sorry, but we can't remove that stain in your hair. We're gonna have to do something that works with it. But I would use a ratio that is one part lightener and four parts 20 volume peroxide. I wouldn't make a bleach bath that a lot of people talk about, sorry about the air quotes, because it's not, it's just not very stable. I would just use peroxide and bleach powder and it would be a one to four mix, sometimes perhaps a one to five mix. And I would apply that to dry hair, not at the back wash. I would apply it to dry hair because then the lift is much more controllable and I would stay with it the whole time. I would apply it to the areas that I needed to remove the stain and then I would stay with it and watch it until the stain was removed. At a one to four ratio, the bleach mix, bleach mix is actually quite diluted because the power of bleach is in the powder. I wouldn't be mixing the bleach with 40 volume peroxide because I would never use 40 volume peroxide at the end. I never go above 20. There are videos here on my channel that go into all of that. This video can't be super long. So yeah, that's it. It's really that simple. If you've got you know less of a stain, then you could do one to five ratio. If you've got more of a stain, then perhaps you could do one to three. If you're working on a canvas that's already bleached, I would be careful. And my preferred ratio is one to four. That's the ratio that I used when I was removing this. Now, this is something I, I made for Overtone a long time ago. An educational video it is here on my channel. And we took gorgeous Ava's hair from the very bold pink and orange. And it was literally freshly done. It was just done and we were making the video to show how to remove it and then I removed it to this using a ratio of one to four. It didn't get rid of all of it because the hair was freshly coloured with the product, you know, with a, a very pigmented direct dye. But if you have a stain in the hair that's been left over time and, you know, most of it's gone but you've just got a little bit that's stubborn and is left behind, that would be my preferred mix. Now there are a couple of other things that are popular with people that to remove direct dye. And in my opinion, they're just not effective, which is why I would always choose to use bleach. And I know there's a lot of fear and a lot of misinformation around bleach, but the two other things are, the first one of those two things is vitamin C. Malibu, I do have some, I meant to bring it back here with me from the salon so that I could hold it up, but I forgot. But Malibu have several different things within their range that they say help to shift direct dye. They can work and they are great formulas. They use vitamin C, ascorbic acid, which basically disrupts the dye molecule. You know, it slips under the cuticle of the hair and helps to disrupt the dye molecule. I keep them in my arsenal. I really only ever use them for removing toner that I that has just been hanging around for a bit too long, oxidative toner. I don't find they work very well on direct dye. If they work for you, that's great. And I'm not throwing shade on Malibu. I do buy their products. But in my opinion, for a stain, they're just not enough. 
especially if you want a very clean canvas, you want to take something back you know, that has a bit of staining in it to be a blonde, you know, a blonde, whatever blonde you're trying to create. And then secondly, the other thing is that a lot of brands have a clear that's a permanent clear that you can mix with peroxide. It's normally mixed with 20 or 30 volume. And a lot of brands will tell you that that will remove direct dye staining as well. In my opinion, I don't think that works very well. If it works for you, that's great. I uh, always have a caveat to that as well. But in my opinion, the best way and the most controlled way and the least damaging way, I know that sounds counterintuitive, is to use bleach. And I mentioned very briefly early on, earlier on the whole bleach bath, which is just such a generic term. If you're going to do that, if you're going to mix bleach, peroxide and shampoo, please make sure that you measure out the quantity. And I would do... You know, I would still do a higher ratio, a higher ratio of peroxide to bleach, but then if you wanted to add some shampoo, I would probably add the same amount of shampoo as you have as bleach powder. I wouldn't advise you do that because in my opinion, it makes the lift very uncontrollable and you're never sure of what you're gonna get. But if that's what you do and it works for you, that rhymes, that's great. So just to conclude this slightly controversial yet bold topic that I know among the pro hairdressing community can create a lot of chatter. If you are working on a bleach canvas and somebody comes into you with a direct dye stain and their hair looks compromised, for goodness sake, don't bleach it. Yay! You have to work with the pigment of that stain and recolour accordingly. So, you know, for example, if somebody has a soft pink stain and they want, they don't want to be pink anymore, you could use a soft green direct dye and create a look with that. Or a stronger green direct dye if they wanted the, the final result to be green and that would neutralise the pink. Does that make sense? Using this fantastic tool, the colour wheel that we all know and love. So, you know, just be careful. For me, removing direct dye is all about bleach and ratios. A one to four ratio is the thing that I would always start off with. And sometimes you might, to do, you might need to do it more than once. If any of the other things that I've mentioned work for you, that's great. And if you've enjoyed this and found it helpful, then you know exactly what to do. Do you have a, what's your favorite? What is your favorite method of direct dye removal? Remembering as well, just worth mentioning, that those two phase colour removers, the uh, oxy, I can't remember the long name of it, oxy sodiumethylene, oxymethylene, oxymethylene, sodium oxymethylene, that's the one. Sodium oxymethylene, um, two step removers won't remove direct dye because that only removes an oxidative dye. And direct dyes are not oxidative, but sometimes they do stain the cuticle. Yeah, so much information. But yes, what's your favourite removal method? I'd love to hear in the comments. Remember, you leave me a comment and or oh, a question, I will always get back to you. I can't give you very specific formulas because I can't see you and there's just too much to it, I'm afraid. But that's the end. A huge thank you if you've got to the end. Thanks for watching this. You will take lots of care and I'll see you all in the next one.